Hello and welcome to part three of the Sikorsky build. Uh, this is the painting, decals and then weathering edition. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Right, I've decided to do the green first. So using the paint and decal guide, basically all of it's green except for the uh, little wing pods and one little panel right at the front. So I'm going to mask those off first, then spray everything green, and then I shall mask around them and do them red. So I need to start with the bit on the front, which is going to be the trickiest bit. So what I'm going to do is take some masking tape that looks like it's about the right size hopefully just a bit oversized cut that and then see if I can get it judging by the picture it's just above the windows straight the top edge is the one I'm going for first let me get some magnification on that alright I can I hold that so you can see it and then I can get in around it okay that's just about there now the bottom of it goes to just below two-thirds of the way through those windows right let's see that's where I'm going uh, much the same as I did when I was doing the windows I'm just gonna score across where I need to make the cut and the sides go basically all the way across so I'm just gonna go down there following where the window is underneath same the other side just several light passes with a knife not using very much pressure on it at all that should give me a cut that's not quite through far enough on the bottom last side hopefully still on camera yeah it should be that's that right I need to neaten up these edges and then get the easy bit done let's get the easy bit done With these, obviously, it's only one edge that needs to be worried, so I'm just going to take a new bit of tape, meet it up against the main fuselage, get that in and round. that not quite long enough there we go nice thing about masking and doing two colors is that you can tidy up when you do the second colour. So as long as this is about there, the edge can be sorted. 
when I come back and do the red doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of overlap and I don't fully mask this right that's those uh, so if I tidy that up get the green on everywhere uh, then get rid of the masking mask it around the edge I need to do the rotor as well and most of the undercarriage uh, the um, wheels and those bits all need to be the green as well so there's lots of green can be going on uh, I need to mix up a, a custom green for it ah, one other bit that needs masking is the extra little fin so let's get that done as well while I'm here get that folded do that as well uh, right I'll uh, get the masking tidied up and sorted then show you what the color looks like and so say I've got to mix up a custom color so I've got to make sure I do enough to cover everything because I'll probably never be able to get it quite the same again uh, I did some tests on the color and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be going with some olive green with some medium gun chip gray uh, mainly green just with a touch of the grey just to darken it down a little bit because it came out a little bit too too dark it's the green which is not a bad colour but it's not quite right for the the finish that I'm going for that's what all these smears were on here uh, so yeah need to add some grey into that but I'll show you that when I get it mixed up. Right, I've mixed up some uh, green, which uh, looks quite nice. Just going to put some in there, and we'll see how it comes across. I'm going to start on the propeller here. That's not bad. It'll come in darker when I give a heavier coat. But all in all, that's not too bad. Maybe you go a little bit darker than that for real preference, but Certainly not a bad start. I'm happy with the colour there. Just get that covered in. Let's give the helicopter itself a going over. On. Obviously, it's tricky to get around it with a spray, but get in there as good as I can. I'll be able to see anything that I've really missed when I come back around again. An extra hand.
of uh, colour match all in all. Sorry, I'm not talking much doing this, but uh, just trying to see what I'm doing as well. Right, I'll get. I know the wheels have got to be black, or at least almost certainly Tammy are rather black on them, which would go nicely over anything, so I'm not worried about covering them, masking them. And back to the start again. Right, I'm going to go and give these another couple of coats and obviously do the second half of the helicopter while I can hold it and use the masking to hold it properly. And uh, I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that as a colour. It's actually pretty close to the original sprue. Not quite so, it's a little bit more browny green, but it's almost sort of army man green I think so uh, yeah I'm happy with that uh, obviously I need to let that dry completely before I get rid of the masking swap it out and do the red which I need to mix up as well but uh, yeah I'm happy with that I'm gonna leave that to dry and then uh, I say take off the masking and redo it in the opposite so I'll show you that when I get that, get that done Right, well that's dried. Um, before I get rid of the masking and do the red bits, I need to put the wheels in because they fit in before the outside panels go on. Uh, so before I put them in, I need to get some painting done on them. So what I'm going to do is put some aluminium uh, sort of dry brushing so this does want to stay mainly green but I do need to add a bit of metallic oh, there you go you can see what I'm doing um, in and around most of this is not going to be visible anyway but I just want to get a, a touch of metal so I'm putting some uh, Vallejo aluminium Getting most of it off on the brush and then just putting some in it should give the effect that although the interior bit has been painted it might have worn a little bit in wear in use and the, the bare metal underneath will be sort of coming through that's the plan anyway just uh, so pick some off on the brush, get rid of most of it, and then just adding it on. When dry brushing, it mainly clings to sort of edges anyway, which is exactly what I want because they're the bits that would show the most wear. It's actually a bit heavier than dry brushing, but it's fine. Uh, so I need to do all of those and then I'll come back and do the black on the tyres themselves. That's why I'm doing these bits in the middle first because if I do go onto the tyres it's not a problem. There you go. While I've got the paint out, I'm going to add some to the interior of the the rotors, just to sort of metalise them a little bit. Again, not the the blades themselves, just some of the working parts. It will just. You might be able to see better on the inside just by brushing with virtually no paint on the brush 
it just picks in bits on the edges and some of the highlights and detail with it. Just to give it a, a bit of depth, a bit of body. That's pretty much it. Do a little bit on the tail rotor, but then that's that. Uh, then I'll do the black on the tyres, get them fitted in, and I can get the outside panels on, then do my reverse masking, and that should be ready for the red painting. Hello. Uh, right, I've masked the bits that are likely to get sprayed when I'm doing the the front and the two side panels glued them together put the wheels in place I've mixed up a little bit of red and fluorescent red to give me that which is just a brighter red which I'm hoping is going to be about right over the grey to match the the red so let's get some of that in the airbrush it's, so it's quite a nice red I haven't mixed up very much of this because obviously I don't need very much of it let's see how that looks let's start at the front shall we bad I think I'll go with that all right if I can hold that here trouble is going to be painting around the wheels that I've got there but let's see how it works if need be I can always brush paint to tidy up any bits that I've missed. paying attention to the camera then I don't know how much of that you're getting probably just my hand by the look of what I'm seeing apologies let's get a bit more red in there probably could have done with changing out to a slimmer needle but oh well got some seam lines in there from the two parts but I couldn't get in to do a great deal with them hoping another coat of paint will mark those and obviously then there's still the decals and the weathering to go that's 
pretty much that. I'll let that dry, then I'll give one more coat over bits just because I know there's going to be bits I've missed. But the weathering's going to help cover up little imperfections like that. The squeaking is just the airflow over some bits of the tape. Alright, let's have one more coat. I think that's going to be it. Right, I'm pretty sure that's about it. Just using some air to dry that a little bit. And then in a moment I'll get the masking off and we'll see how it goes. Let me clean the airbrush and then it'll be time to get the masking off. Well, that's the red done. Let's see how it looks. I've got so many bits of masking tape on here that it's probably going to take about a half hour video to get rid of them, but something strangely satisfying about pulling off masking tape, except when you get it stuck to your fingers. This should be it for the, the major painting. I do still need to do some detail work on the engines and obviously touch up a few bits here and there. And then it'll be into the weathering. But once this is all off, I think I'm gonna put the windows on. Take the masking off of the front windows obviously as well. You never know, some of it might come off with this. Hopefully I'm not peeling off any bits. No. Looks like the windows aren't coming off. Alright, there we go. That's the red front panel. I like it. I don't know how well it's coming out on film. But. Come on, get that corner. There you go. All that effort for such a little bit of tape. My masking may not be the best ever, but it does the job. It gets stops you getting paint where you don't want it. Oh, a little patch up there that something's gone wrong with. Uh, right, yeah, all in all, I'm happy with that. So there's a couple of bits on the edge that do need touching up with both the green and the red, but I've got spares of both of those. those off without ripping it apart. Let's try just that go. There we 
go. Alright. Yeah. That's close enough. Let's see the box. Uh, so you can see the box. There you go. The green is definitely darker. But uh, all in all, I'm happy with that. Uh, right, I'll uh, pick off the little bits of masking on the windscreen, touch up the joins, and then get ready with the rest of the detail work. The fronts of the engines and the insides of the engines. I want to bring out some of these detail panels around here as well. And the windows, of course. So, back in a moment. Well, that's the windows in, and I've just done a clear coat on it which I need to let dry but of course I forgot that I still need to do some black uh, looking at the instructions closer the rotors blades themselves are going to be black on both the tail rotor and the main bit although the inside bits still going to be green so I'm going to brush paint those I also need to do the uh, inside of the, the intake need to be black uh, and a couple of other bits here and there but uh, yeah, I'll uh, let that dry and do that, those bits, touch up the little bits inside the back of the engines I need to paint as well. Um, then I'll do another uh, gloss coat, then I can do the decals. And that's it painted. I've given it another clear coat uh, just to lock in the extra details that I've put in on the uh, well, black and silver bits basically around the intakes and the back vent, uh, the two little aerial things, the hook on the bottom that you can't see at the moment but there, uh, and black on the tail rotor and the main rotor itself. Uh, I'm leaving the rotor off to get the decals because there's something that needs to go on, the on there as well and obviously around it's just much easier. But I'm happy with the paint, it's come out nice, it's too shiny but that's fine. Uh, decals go on better over a, a gloss coat rather than a matte anyway so uh, yeah there does seem to be some dust or something's got into the inter internal bit of the canopy but uh, I can't do anything about that now anyway but that's fine uh, right so that's that I'll uh, let that dry and then start on the decals um, I'll probably film a little bit of the decals but there's not, not point much point in doing all of them because there's quite a lot uh, right, so I'll uh, get a few done and then show you a few and then get it all done. Right, I've just uh, added the yellow highlights to the tips of the rotors. I need to do another coat of that because yellow over black obviously doesn't work very well. Um, time for the decals. Now there's a huge and scary sheet. Obviously a few come off for the interior already. Um, it appears that most of them oh, are going to be used but there are some that are only used on the other version that I haven't done the uh, 2012 version where I'm doing the 86 version so basically with decals <coughs> I've got if I can show you what I have let's see right ready I have some tissue some warm water a knife sharp the decals a cutting mat and the model also uh, micro set and micro sole although the sole I won't be using quite yet the red one put that aside for when they're all on there the blue micro set and a brush for assisting putting them on Right, now the trouble with decals is they take a while to set. So what I need to do, obviously if I was putting that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, by the time I put the third one on, I'm gonna nudge the second one. So what I generally do is do one from an area and then go to a completely different area, do another one, and then work my way through the entire model or leave it a bit and come back once they've actually set on there. And then it's okay to obviously touch them. So there's a lot of tiny little decals 
in lots of different places so this is not going to be a, a, a one day job um, I'm going to do a couple on camera and then obviously just do the rest as and when there's two three four five on each rotor just to give you the idea obviously you, all of these little numbers a decal so on the front there's several on the tops and bottom and they're everywhere basically um, a couple of them are obviously quite obvious the, the large black piece is here which goes over the engine um, generally better to do the, the larger ones first and then you can put in the little ones uh, so I might as well start as I say with the larger one so we've got 55 and 55 no that's not them that's 8 and 16 are the big ones which obviously aren't pictured on here ah oh, yes it is 8 there we go so 8 goes on that side let me turn that around so I'm dealing with that now before you do any cutting or anything it's always a good idea to make sure you know roughly what you're doing so that goes underneath the rotor so I go to here and come back to there and is 8 is that top one there so with the knife just cut around you don't have to be precise and exact with decals and also if you cut away the number or the number which is actually made of the same stuff as the actual decal themselves so you end up with numbers floating around in your water so that's cut off the eight do be cutting a little bit deeper but oh well so that goes in the water which you can just about see pretty much that's that now depending on the quality of the decals and temperature of the water actually as well the colder the water the longer it takes to do anything this is say fresh warm water so oh, there you go the decals actually come off already so now the trick is to pick it up without damaging it and without it curling up normally you can use the paper but obviously that's not going to work with that um, before I pick it up I'm going to use some micro set and just damp down where it's going to go just gives you a better surface for it to adhere to gives you a little bit of leeway as to what you're doing as well so you get that down Let's see if I can adjust the light a little bit so you can see um, almost where it needs to be and then you can carefully hopefully move it a bit there you go just nudge it gently with the brush or pick it up and move it where it needs to be to get it where it should be on the thing so that needs to go quite a lot further that way so I will gently with the tweezers pick up the end and just pull it along to where it needs to be apologies if you can't actually see this you should be able to doesn't go to that middle piece so it stays all, all on one level just on there and that top piece needs to be just the in touching so that should be about that just use some more micro set on the top just to bed it down in the right place there we go and that as I say is that um, obviously the other big one goes the other side so I'll get that done next and then I shall work my way along all of them the paper just get rid of uh, ordinarily if it comes out still on the paper I like to use the tissue just to dry off some of the, the water from that but obviously I was a bit too slow with that one right I'll get some more on or all of them on and then show you it all, all decaled up and then it'll be time for the weathering and that we finished so hopefully well in for you no time at all for me might be a few days
but uh, see you soon. All right, I thought I'd try and give you a, a view of it all working properly. So here we go. Um, another piece in the water. Make sure it's submerged. I've already covered the area with micro set. That should be enough time in the water. So I'm just going to pull that out, touch it to the tissue to drain off the excess water from the back. Now the piece itself is, yep, there you go, loose. So I get it the right way round. And slide it off of the paper or put it in the right place and slide the paper away from it more correctly then play with it to get it into the right place just need to nudge it down a little bit further there we go too far you can't see because my hands are in the way Yeah, as I say, it's not going to be a quick job, this. I can't pull it out, so let's grab it gently. Just tease it into the right place. Should be a little bit further away than that. There we go. So. That's that. Uh, now, being that this has got a nice gloss coat over it, the decals are able to sit on it nicely, smoothly, without causing any lumps and bumps, but that's what the microset helps set it against as well. Um, and the microsole will again do that even better. Once I've finished with all of it, I'll be able to give them a going over with that. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's that. See you when it's done. I thought I'd have a quick halfway through update. Um, I've done most of the decals on the rotors. Still one I need to sort out. And some on here. Um, got a few on the back. around the door, underneath. It just adds a certain something having decals on it, but I'll get the rest of them on and then show you it done before we start the weathering. And all the decals are on. A pile of rubbish from them. Um, I'll put the rotor back on as well. So, that is that. I'm happy with the way it's come out. The Decals do give a a sort of depth and a realism to it that you don't get with just the paint. Uh, right, so I need to give it all a matte coat, but I don't need to give the windows a matte coat. So I need to mask them again. I'm going to mask the, the windows, uh, give it all a matte, then get rid of the masking from the windows and start some weathering. Um, yeah, uh, there's not going to be a lot of heavy weathering on this because I don't need to do too much. Uh, I think I'm going to basically give it a, a smoke wash just to dull it all down and blend the, the markings in a bit. I might do a little bit of damage to a couple of the, the decals. They look a bit too new. But uh, being a military aircraft, I think they would keep it in a bit nicer condition than you know run down anything uh, so yeah not going to do very much with it I'll uh, so get it uh, matte and then give it the smoke and see what it looks like after that but uh, I won't be filming all of the steps so I'll uh, so get it masked and get it get the smoke wash on and then you'll see what it looks like right the matte coat's dried I've re-glossed bits in the windows I'm happy with how that's come out <coughs> right next I'm going to start with a, a smoke wash uh, this is some Tamiya smoke and thinners 
uh, basically mostly thinner with a bit of smoke in it uh, what it gives is um, just a, a very light discoloration uh, you can use it through an airbrush apparently I've not tried that myself with this particular wash but basically I'm just gonna paint it liberally, liberally uh, everywhere uh, the engines are obviously the bits that are going to get more grimy and dirty so I will be adding extra weathering to those but this should if I can do it without knocking the camera every time I need to load up the brush uh, this will go over the windows as well because it doesn't matter everything's going to be just that little bit grimy just sort of takes the edge off a little bit of everything being that it's mainly thinners it dries quite quickly so I'm just going to give everything a going over just brings everything down to earth a little bit I'll do the front when I'm not holding on to it uh, when it is quite wet I'll be putting it down obviously on its wheels anyway so gravity will pull the paint downwards which is where I want it to be Let's move that over the other side um, yeah so any sort of smearing and streaking that will occur will occur in the natural directions and hopefully as I say you might need to do more than one coat of this because it is very I won't say thin but it doesn't do much on its own it doesn't add very much darkness and texturing to anything but it does just add something so my intention is say to cover this completely in the smoke wash then when that's dried which won't take a great deal of time on this so possibly do another coat of it but certainly do some more detail of weathering uh, in some of the electronic work the uh, the rotor sensor around the exhaust from the engines and just everywhere that dust and dirt and everything will gather and pick up so I think that's pretty much everything covered on there let me just grab it and do the bottom front I couldn't do some of the wheels as I say it just takes the edge off the boring bits and adds a bit, little bit of texture to it as well right I'll uh, leave that to dry and then get in and add some more wherever I need to and then we'll see I'm gonna let's say add some darkening to the intake and the ex ex not ex take the exhaust up there uh, and probably some just sort of around here where it would blow back a bit and obviously from the top bit up dropping down but uh, it's not going to be a very very weathered model not going to do any paint chipping or anything like that on there because I'd say at least in my mind this has been more looked after than you know a tank that's been left to rot or anything like that so it's just the sort of day to day where, where and whether that I need to do on this so I'll get some more of that done and then uh, that's pretty much going to be it for this build but, uh, yeah I hope you've enjoyed it but I'll show you the, the finished model and talk you through what I has, what's actually done when it's done and I think I'm calling that done uh, I'm happy with the way it's turned out it's yeah I could possibly do with a bit more weathering to age it a little bit but I th thought I'd do this one as a 
a more in use and sort of uh, working helicopter rather than a, an, a, an old abandoned one so uh, yeah I'm happy with just a little bit of light weathering on it uh, all in all quite a pleasant build not really any major problems um, revel kit but as I say it's fine um, I wouldn't really change anything different um, not overly happy with the way the windows are fitted but they're okay uh, first time I've done little windows like that so again maybe a little bit more time spent on getting them just right and cleaning them up properly but all in all I'm happy with it I hope you've enjoyed the build um, obviously as normal uh, like the video subscribe to my channel there'll be more coming up soon um, I do you know some Star Wars stuff and some regular uh, models as well so uh, yeah I hope you've enjoyed it uh, uh, stay tuned for some more Thanks.